Still a beautiful Sunday. Welcome to Disney Live, the Sunday talk show here on the Arise News channel. With me, and uh, we've been trying to connect uh, to join her, but she'll be joining us on the show, will be Yemi Adamoleko, Executive Director at Enough is Enough, and Achiki Chudu, who's with me here in the studio, civil society activist, author, and social political affairs commentator. Uh, great to have you both, but Yemi will join us much later. Achiki, uh, good to see you. Yeah. Uh, you heard the interview uh, with um, Dr. Muda Yusuf, which was like a tapestry. And I deliberately use the word tapestry in our economy because as a writer, you've got sort of like your tapestry of thoughts, you know, going out there. Uh, what's your take about his robust ideas on the economy? And he posted something for the free market capitalist. He says there's a need for government to make interventions as regards price controls when price go overboard. What's your take on that? Yeah, um, now of course, uh, he, he, his position was expected. He's um, a proponent of a free market economy, obviously, and then uh, so he's uh, more or less uh, defending his uh, constituency as giving reasons why uh, the government had to do what the government you know, did. Uh, the fact that uh, he said that, look, the situation was uh, unsupportable and that uh, something just had to give, something had to be done and that uh, the country had allowed some of these things. I'm talking about essentially, and I think it was going in the direction of course, policy. Uh, number one being uh, essentially uh, the biggest of them all, uh, the removal of a uh, fuel subsidy. And then the other one he talked about was uh, the, uh, you know, the parallel uh, exchange market that he felt was uh, an, you know, um, an anomaly that uh, uh, had to make sense uh, ultimately. And then, um, and then all the other arguments, you know, that uh, come with um, a free market economy. Uh, but I think it was clear. I think I, you know, and I agree with you too. Uh, he also talked about a uh, government's responsibility that regardless of uh, whatever economic direction any government will want to go, even in a free, you know, market economy, that there are certain social responsibilities uh, that a uh, government, you know, has to carry out because while you're going out, while you are, you are, you are moving on with these uh, policies, uh, the, the people themselves have to live, the people themselves have to survive. And so when situations become very tenuous, then a government comes under very serious uh, pressure uh, to do something. And then we have seen that because we have seen governments that have collapsed as a result of uh, social, uh, economic and social problems. I mean, the crisis in Sudan to, today could be traceable you know, to the increase uh, in uh, wheat and some other basic commodities, including fuel. And that, that was what led to the you know, uprising by the people and the series of protests. Uh, eventually, the soldiers had to uh, take sides with the people against uh, the, uh, the government and then, uh, the, of, 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 of course, of uh, the former strongman of Sudan. And then that situation has persisted up to today. Now we are facing the prospect of a civil war uh, in Sudan. So many have been killed. So these things are critical because, you know, my, my problem. Of, yeah. or, or the war uh, well, well yeah, pe people, <laughs> people feel. Of course, it has started, but a lot of people still feel it is low scale. But I don't know. And of course, so if it can get worse than, than it is right now, then you, you have an idea, the kind of um, tragedy that would unfold. Of course, it's already unfolding. You know, so uh, that is the due, that's the response. There's a social contract. We cannot deny that, regardless of whatever economic policies you want to uh, carry out. Uh, you must do it because you are there at the behest of the people. And that mm. is the, you know, essentially what government is all about. You have been given a leeway, you have been given an idea of what is expected of you by the country's constitution, the welfare you know, and the security of the people. That is your primary responsibility. And so how you go about doing it really is something that obviously it must be done. And if it is not done, when the people feel that they have taken enough from you or from any other, any government for that matter, the people have the power, they have the ability to push back only when they have gotten to what they see as a point of no return. So whatever it is that the government is trying to do, uh, they, they must do quick. And I think I liked the question you asked. Mm. You asked him how short is short? Because, you know, the issue, the argument has how always been... Short, yeah. How long is short term? How long, exactly. And, and how, exactly, 2024. Exactly, 2024. And the situation is going to persist. Mm. The government is talking today about, um, about uh, palliatives. And then you are wondering, I mean, look, the reality is that there is no palliative, 
you know, that can be given to the people that will be satisfactory to the Nigerian people if it does not address the issue of food, if it does not address the issue, you know, of transportation, how people can move. Of course, you know that, and, and again, even when you look at even the free market economy you're talking, we have a way of perverting everything that we do in this country. Even when we have, we, 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 we've been to America, we know what is going on and the rest. Look at what happened. Look at the response of uh, the so-called capitalist countries with regards to their people, with, you know, when it comes to food. Uh, the food, national, you know, food security is of strategic national importance to all of these countries you're talking about. It is critical, it's important. That's why, essentially, no matter how much, you know, how difficult life is could be sometimes in those places, the price of basic food commodities are always low enough so that the mm. people can eat. Mm. But I do not think that our political elites look at these things from that perspective. Mm. Yeah. All right, I mean, you said a lot, and food is very important. We can remember the, the days of, uh, you know, the rice crisis in yeah. Liberia. We can go to the French Revolution. We can even talk about what happened recently in America with the national emergency on, on baby milk powder. Oh, yeah. You know, the importance of that. But another thing we talked about was 2.51% GDP now. Yeah. At a time where most of the candidates leading up to the election promised, you know, double-digit growth. We keep talking about double-digit growth. When you check the historical antecedents in Nigeria, probably the early 2000s, that's when we've grown the highest. So under Alusha Gobas, when we grew 15.3%. So since then, that has eluded us. Our best years was hovering around 6% growth, but now 2 3%, sometimes 1%, sometimes a recession. That's where we've been, 2.51% now. And, and, any good indications coming up? No, I, I think it's even going to get worse. Because don't also forget, look at the economy itself. The economy is constricting. You know, it's, it's, there's no, it's contract, it's, 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 it's closing in. I, businesses have closed. People talked about, uh, is it uh, GSK? Uh, GSK FK, that's what, I mean, one of those that everybody talks about. But you're looking at uh, even the small and medium term, you know, uh, a medium uh, scale enterprise enterprises. A lot of them have gone down. They have, they lack the ability, you know, to provide, uh, you know, for their workers, for their staff. So some of them have had to close down. Some of them have had to do, I mean, for, for those ones that can still work, uh, depending on the kind of businesses they run, some of them have had to, you know, um, uh, uh, go back to the uh, COVID period of, uh, you know, uh, working out of uh, the physical work, out of the office, you know, working, mm. you know, um, online and, and all of that for those who have the, 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 the facility to be able to do that. Mm. But for a lot of people who are not able to, they have had to shut down creating unemployment in the process. Obviously, we are suffering from the, mis you know, from the misdeeds of the past. Uh, the oil has continued to be the mainstay of our economy, the driving force of, you know, behind our economy. And uh, regardless of uh, even all the promises we've had from Operation Feed the Nation uh, the, and all the other, it was even from 1979 till date. And every government that has succeeded, you know, the previous government has also talked about the need to diversify the economy. That diversification has not happened. Yes, of course, in the age of technology, you're talking about uh, communications, you're talking about ICT and the rest. And so if you look at the 2.5 GDP growth, it came, the positive came from, you know, the, the uh, uh, non, non-manufacturing uh, sector. Uh, sector, the yes, services sector. You know, that's where it, it came from. Manufacturing contracted, um, agriculture also contracted uh, within uh, uh, this period. So we are left with, uh, you know, the, the services sector. Uh, obviously, uh, the the you know production oil production has also fallen drastically. I mean, well, maybe not too drastically from one point four one point four to one point two. Yeah, that they attribute you know, to work's been done at Focados, and I think Focados has been fixed now. If it gets up on track, we should be able to have a bop up from what, in, in from all, what we are told. From what we are told, from in oil what production. Told, yeah, if if that happens, so mm. these are some of the issues. So I don't even I don't expect any immediate growth. Uh, you know, right now. And besides, you know, there's something we, well, it's always good for an economist to talk, you know, um, uh, even though sometimes uh, some of them are non plus too when it comes to uh, what, uh, you know, the outcome of some of even the economy projections and all that, okay. talk microeconomics, macroeconomics and the rest. But the reality is, I mean, one of the things that we also fail, that most times we fail to take into cognizance, that when okay. you're talking about economic okay. reform, you must be able to talk about political reform. Okay. And I will okay. give you, okay. Okay. I understand Yemi has joined us now. Yemi Adamaleko, Executive Director and Office and Office, joining us now, also a panelist 
on this day live. Great to have you here. It's a pleasure seeing you again. Uh, let's go straight to it. I'm sure you heard Thank the you. Dr. Uh, Dr. Muda Yusuf's uh, interview there where he talked about the economy. We pretty much talked about the 2.51% economic growth. I mean, what's your take on that? I mean, I heard a bit of it uh, for connectivity, but I mean, I think we've said what else, what really needs to be said, and there's no point repeating. I don't know why we're surprised. Um, well, we shouldn't be surprised, I guess, is the point to be made. And on the kind of general larger issues around how the economy has been run and continues to be run, we now have a substantive Minister of Finance and Coordinating Minister of the Economy. Um, for the first time, three other ministries have economy in their title. Marine, or is it blue economy? There's digital economy, there's creative economy. And so it'll be very interesting to see how all those different ministries are coordinated to the point of improving Nigeria's um, economic situation. I mean, our largest forex earner is still a battlefield in a sense. I think I saw a headline on the Arise website around the government uh, being very determined to curb that all, th all theft and whatnot. So, I mean, there are just a lot of loose ends, to be clear, and really no, um, in my opinion, just nothing really clear that this is exactly what we're doing about the economy. This is the plan. This is what we put in the place. This is the holes we're plugging. This is how we're cutting costs to ensure that the economy works for everyone. But instead, we continue to see government spend money on frivolities while asking Nigerians to tighten their belts. Mm. Okay. Uh, you see, there's this back and forth uh, as regards this palliative. Uh, I think we also talked about that. They need to be able to bring down mm -hmm. the price of food and all of that. Mm 